friends from the media and colleagues it is an honor to be at, it, is, it is honor to be here at the economic editor conference and interact with all of you who keep an eye on the economic pulse of the nation i address this august gathering as the union minister of Trans road transport highways and railways both these ministries play a pivotal role in developing the infrastructure and connectivity which help a great deal in boosting the economy of the country. I will start my address with Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, but can assure you that our approach for the railways will be no different. From the common men to billion dollar conglomerates, everyone is welcome at the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. This is not merely for the sake of speaking. Take a look at our performance. To begin with, I will share our initiative of e-tending with you. This endeavor of ours, inviting tenders electronically, has brought in more bidders to the table, in turn rising the tune of business. Till date, 525 tenders have been floated, and we were set to generate business of around 1 lakh crore from the same. This example gives you an idea of how we are trying to view an inclusive system of growth and betterment of all stakeholders. Our national highways constitute merely 1.7% of the length of the road network, but they are carry 40% of the traffic on roads. This provides an immense potential for growth and development of road network, and we are striving to excel. At our ministry, we are not only working towards making the most of the opportunities, but also ensuring that we do so in a transparent way, giving equal opportunity to all and also involving the end users, the people. Staying with the public, we have pushed for the public-private partnership model and policy framework. Ladies and gentlemen, with this initiative, 8,000 kilometers have been awarded in the last one year, and it is estimated to generate approximately 80,000 crores. Awards of road aside, under the National Highways Development Program, from June 2004 to September 2012, we have built up 10,687 kilometers of quality highways and with an investment of rupees 6,178 crores. Another major step we are taking up is to launch a large program of public funded projects under the Engineering, Procurement and Construction, construction EPC or Turnkey Mode. A new EPC contract document has been finalized on fixed cost and time basis to replace the traditional item rate contracts, which have the issue of time and cost overruns. We are planning to award about 4,000 kilometers of roads for two laning on EPC mode in the current financial year. To expedite this, we have issued a general request for qualification based on capacity rather than individual project specific. The evolutions would be done in a transparent manner and will be posted on our websites so that the bidder has opportunity to represent. The qualified bidders would automatically be eligible for any projects up to the capacity for which they have been qualified. <coughs> Friends, let me bring in a matter of policy here. As an important policy matter, we have decided that the existing national highways and those in pipelines will be taken to minimum level of two lane with paved shoulder specifications. While undertaking new projects, we aim to connect the remote parts of the country with the mainstream and be a partner in the development process. You will be aware, last week, we led the foundation of Jadmore tunnel projects at Sonmar in Jammu and Kashmir. There, there the 6.5 kilometer tunnel, along with six kilometers approach road, is being built at a cost of 2,700 crores on BOT annuity basis. In the same vein, a still larger and more complex tunnel projects at Jojila Pass having 13 kilometer length and a total project cost of 5,500 5, 5, crores is also being envisaged to be initiated next year. These two tunnels together will provide all weather connectivity to Kargil, Leh, Ladakh region which at present remains cut off for six months in a year due to bad weather and landslides. Likewise, 
upcoming tunnels between Kojikunda and Banihal and Chennai and Nasari will reduce the travel distance between Srinagar and Jammu, Jammu by 46 kilometers. Along with building new roads, our ministry is giving high priority to road safety issues. We have identified 25 black spots, each in 13 accident-prone states, and are actively rectifying these places. Safety awareness campaign have been launched across various media platforms. I am happy to say that in many states, our efforts have shown results, and road accident and casualties have come down. We have introduced a number of information, communication, and technology initiatives. First, owing to the e-procurement and e-tendering initiatives, about 525 tenders have been floated by NHAI electronically. As a direct result of competitive bidding and number of applicants going up, NHAI will receive rupees 300 crore per year for next 25 years as a premium in various highway projects. I would like to share that our e-trending system has been audited by the World Bank. Second ICT initiative is that by 2014, all toll plazas on national highways will, be, will collect toll electronic, electronically using the RFID technology. This will eliminate long queues and toll plaza and enabling hassle-free travel on highways. These initiatives have helped, but looking at the recent global economic conditions, there have been few challenges in project financing, land equations, arbitration claims, mergers, and transfer of projects, etc. Let me assure you that the government is addressing these issues and is in dialogue with concessionaires, lenders, and regulatory agencies. Concluding my talk on road, I would like to share our attempt to connect with the end users, people via Facebook. The NHA Facebook page, since its inception in January last year, has had 14 lakh visitors. There are around 5,000 people registered on the same contributing with their suggestions. Friends, with this, I will now shift my talk to our railways. I have assumed charge, of, uh, charge recently, and let me again say that I said on day one that safety and amenity of passengers will be our top priority. Having said that, I am in consultation with my colleagues at the Railways Ministry, and aware of the constraints and expectation of the people will try to strike a balance between the two. One of the biggest hazards to safety are the unmanned railway crossings, and our long-term goal is to mend them. At present, we are exploring various measures to address this issue. Before embarking on any major decisions, I am familiarizing myself with the functioning of the railways, for each ministry has a unique way of functioning and decision-making. Friends, you will agree that along with safety, Modernization is the need of the hour. I am aware of the two important reports, one on modernization by Prithoda Committee and other on rail safety by Kakodgar Committee. Both these reports are with my ministry and are being actively deliberated on. After consultation, we have decided to constitute Rail Traffic Authority. Issue on priority, the RFQ for Mumbai Elevated Rail Corridor. Accelerate work on the seven high-speed corridors and to monitor dedicated freight corridor. As I conclude, let me assure you that we will leave no stone unturned to ensure the highest standards of safety, uh, high, highest standards of safety are maintained. We work collectively towards modernization and develop lasting infrastructure that plays catalyst in the development story. We are determined that the will of the development rules steadily taking everyone along on the path of prosperity. Thank you.